You're listening to Renewing Religion, a podcast about worship, social duties, and spirituality featuring an overview of Imam al-Ghazali's Ihya. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Hub. This Ramadan, our goal is to raise $75,000 in monthly donations to build a global Islamic seminary so that dedicated students all over the world can complete their journeys and become Islamic scholars. You can help them by becoming a monthly donor at seekershub.org slash donate. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan yaliqu bi jalali wajhihi wa azimi sultanih. Nashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa nashadu anna Sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Allahumma salli wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin tibbi al-qulubi wa dawaiha wa aafiyat al-abdani wa shifaiha. ونور الأبصار وضيائها وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم نوينا التعلم والتعليم والتذكر والتذكير والنفع والانتفاع والإفادة والاستفادة والحفظ التمسك بكتاب الله وسنة رسوله والدعاء إلى الهدى والدلالة على الخير ابتغاء وجه الله ومرضاته وقربه وثوابه سبحانه وتعالى This is a beautiful book uh, Imam al-Ghazali added at the very end of the section on the quarter, the ten books on ibadat, on adat, sorry, uh, and Imam al-Ghazali said that he wanted to end with this because the character of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam and his etiquette and how he had the pinnacle of every beautiful kind of characteristic that you could imagine. Uh, was something that encompassed all of the things that uh, he covered previously, right? And one of the things that's very important to understand about beautiful character in, in this book is adab al ma'isha, and really you could almost translate it as life skills. And that's what a lot of people really need, and they need their religion to to make sense and to be practical for them. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through revelation and through the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, really showed us the best way to be, the way that we're supposed to be, the way that we're meant to be. Uh, so it's the, the etiquette of lifestyle, that could be one way to translate it, and the character of prophethood. Right, so this is uh, uh, something that's, that's really beautiful. And in religion, especially in today's world, one of the most damaging things, one of the most damaging things to other people's uh, spiritual uh, path and journey, and one of the most damaging things to da'wah, to inviting and calling people to Allah, and really one of the most damaging things to a community are people who commit to the outward form of religion, but then have ugly character. When you have that, when you create this cognitive dissonance within religion, you mess it up for a lot of people. But one of the things that Imam al-Ghazali and many others, especially the great scholars of the inward and spiritual sciences, is that they recognize that that is always a trap and a potential pitfall of the nafs is that as a person is gaining sacred knowledge and as a person is starting to conform to God's command and will is that it can start to to take on the qualities of arrogance. It can start to take on the qualities of uh, excessive rigidity. It can start to take on these negative qualities that are not actually fruits of proper spiritual development, which is why it's so critical to understand and study and connect to the Prophet ﷺ. Because if you want the clearest understanding of the way that you are supposed to live and be, connect with the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. And we don't just mean connect with the Messenger of Allah on a very, uh, on a very surface level, Although everything about the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is honorable and everything about the Beloved of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as Imam Al-Junaid said, all of the doors are closed, all of the doors to God are closed except for the one who follows in the footsteps of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is the, the way to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
But it doesn't mean that that is also, once again, a person can use that in a very egotistical way. How long is your beard and how short is your thobe is not the full expression of what the Messenger of Allah وسلم, came with. Although even his outward sunnah is extremely important. That there's also the inward sunnah of mercy, of forbearance, of patience, of trust in Allah, of courage, of fortitude, of all of these powerful, powerful, powerful character traits that he came with and that we are supposed to take from him. Salawatullahi wa salamahu alayhi. So Imam al-Ghazali, once again, so beautifully, he introduces this book and he says, فَإِنَّ أَدَابِ الظَّوَاهِرَ عُنْوَانُ أَدَابِ الْبَوَاطِنِ He says that having outward etiquette is a sign of the inward etiquette. That when a person is, you know, uh, is, uh, acts in a particular way, it's an indication that that's the way of their heart, for good or for bad. وَحَرَكَاتِ الْجَوَارِحِ ثَمَرَاتُ الْخَوَاطِرِ And the movements of one's limbs are the fruits of their inward thoughts. So there's a deep connection with the state of your heart and what you do. As the Prophet ﷺ said, that there is a morsel of flesh in the body. If it is sound, every other limb and every other thing you do is sound. And if it is corrupted, everything that you do is corrupted. Truly, it is the heart. And so he says that what you do is a fruit of your inward state. And your deeds are the consequences or the outcome of your character. And etiquette is the, uh, how, do you, how would you translate rashh al ma'arif? It's the uh, sprinkles that come out of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the rays that come out of the, the knowledge of Allah. When someone actually increases in a deep understanding and knowledge of the beauty and the majesty and the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they can only increase in greater character because it's, a, it's, an, it's an expression of their own servitude. It's an expression of what they need to be like before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَسَرَائِرِ الْقُلُوبِ هِيَ مَغَارَسُ الْأَفْعَالِ وَمَنَابِعُهَا And the uh, secret areas of the heart are the planting grounds for good deeds uh, and the place where the fruits come from. وَأَنْوَارُ السَّرَائِرِ هِيَ أَلَّتِي تُشْرَقُ عَلَى الظَّوَاهِرِ فَتُزَيِّنُهَا وَتُجَلِّيهَا And the lights that are in the heart they are the, the things that emanate on the limbs. So anyway, he goes on, and once again, the language is so beautiful in the Arabic that we can't really uh, do it justice by translating it. But he says that in this chapter, the way that you need to live, the way that you understand how to live, is looking at the character of the Prophet ﷺ. And actually, one of the greatest proofs of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa is his character. You will not find a single human being in human history like Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can take that to the bank. You will not find a human being like him sallallahu wa sallam alayhi. In every single character trait that he had, he was the epitome and the pinnacle of that. He was the fountainhead of that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Think of anything. And the thing is, don't take my word for it. Some people might be like, okay, we're Muslims. We believe all of that. Don't take my word for it. Research it. Test it out. Look into his life and in the situations that he was in and apply that to anyone else in history. Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِنَّكَ لَا عَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And you are... Literally above lofty character. You are stationed in a position where you, it is as if he, sallallahu alayhi wa is uh, uh, above and controlling all beautiful character, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And he said, And I was only sent 
to perfect noble character. And Imam al-Ghazali then has chapters broken up uh, into the character traits of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, of his generosity, of his courage, of his forbearance, of his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of his miracles. And we'll just look at uh, a few of them because there's so much to go through. But really what Imam al-Ghazali is doing in this book of the Ihya is sort of like a very brief version of the Shama'il. And one of the things that we all really need to do in today's world, as one of our teachers said, that he's of the opinion now that people need to study the Shama'il of the Prophet ﷺ before they study his biography. And what are the Shama'il? The Shama'il are his character traits. Why? Because when you understand the character traits of the Prophet ﷺ, you're able to understand his normative sunnah and you're able to understand exceptional situations. And every human being, and actually exceptional situations, only further highlight the, the value and the, the weight of the normative sunnah. So when the Prophet ﷺ refuses to curse and make dua against people, and then there's a particular instance where he actually makes dua against a particular people, you realize that that instance was actually a grave, grave, grave injustice that they did against him. So you understand in, in the battle of Uhud, he wouldn't make dua against people. But then there was one situation where you find people today, you say, don't make dua against, against people. Don't curse non-Muslims. Don't curse people who don't believe. Don't even curse against people who don't have any love for Islam. They'll say, no, 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 but the Prophet said, curse. Look at this hadith and they'll cite it for you and they'll bring all of that. Say, but that was exceptional. Look at the many times when he said, I was not sent as one to bring curses, but I was sent as a gift of mercy. What is the normative character of the Prophet and what is his character but exceptional, an exceptional instance and circumstance? So we have to know that uh, you know, before we study the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, and alhamdulillah there's uh, uh, a lot of opportunities uh, Shaykh Abdul Aziz uh, Suraqa has translated many books about the character traits of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. He's translated a commentary on the Burda. Uh, and there's also, you know, courses available and a lot of material that, that we can now access in the English language if we'd like to learn more about his character. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa One of the most interesting aspects of the life of the Prophet is his lifestyle at home. And this is something that we all need to reflect very deeply on. Uh, and once again, like I said at the beginning, that when you have people who uh, outwardly appear religious, but their character is ugly, it's almost like water and oil. Like something's not missing, something's not right. And then a lot of people, when they're harmed and hurt by someone like that, they start to internalize it and say, oh, well, you know, that's, religion is just a placebo that these people use to make themselves feel good about themselves. And they use it to kind of control and harm other people. But look at the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. He said, uh, one of the, the people describing uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, ما شتم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أحدا من المؤمنين بشتيمة إلا جعل له كفارة ورحمة. That the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, he never used a harsh word and he never uh, insulted any one of the believers. But there were certain times where he would use firm language, not as an insult, but actually to train and teach. The people around him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. وَمَا لَعْنَ إِمْرَأَةً قَطْ وَلَا خَادِمًا بِلَعْنَةٍ And he never once cursed a woman or a servant with any form of cursing. And this is in the most intimate of settings with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. The Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik, radiyallahu anhu, he said, I served the Messenger of Allah for 10 years as a little boy from the time that he was 10 years old. He said, I served the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he basically lived with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He was doing all of his errands, get, getting him the water for wudu, 
doing things for him. And he said, never once did the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa tell me, why did you do that? Or why didn't you do that? In 10 years, little boy, and he, and he by his own admittance said, I made mistakes. He said, one time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he sent me on an errand. And uh, as I was going to fulfill this task, he was a little boy. He saw some boys playing in the street. So he said, I got caught up in the game. I started playing around with them, whatever it may have been, tag or racing or whatever. Uh, uh, he said, I, I forgot about what the Prophet ﷺ told me to do. He said, a certain amount of time passed. He said, then I felt someone put their hand on my shoulder. And I knew it was the hand of the Messenger of Allah And it's like one of those things where it goes, oops. You know, like, it all comes back now. He said, and then I turned around, and the Prophet ﷺ was smiling at me. He said, Rasulullah, I'm, I'm going to go do what you ask me right now. <laughs> and then Sayyidina Anas, عنه, if you look at the ahadith where the Sahaba are describing the Prophet ﷺ, they, uh, you'll find them change the subject a bunch of times. They'll be talking about one thing, then they'll talk about something else entirely that's unrelated. So he'll say, the Prophet ﷺ never once, uh, uh, you know, yelled at me or rebuked me and said, why did you do this or why didn't you do that? And then he says, and there, was, there is no silk nor velvet softer than the hand of the Messenger of Allah. And in the same hadith, and there is nothing that smells more better, uh, more beautiful than the scent of the Messenger of Allah. What does his hand being soft and smelling good have anything to do with the way that he dealt with him as a child? Absolutely nothing. But that's what happens when someone's in love. They just start to remember all of the things that they love about their beloved. And you know, the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never once did, the, you know, his hand, there's nothing softer and more beautiful than his hand. Nothing sweeter than his scent, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you'll see those Sahaba do that all the time. Because they're people who were completely soaked in the love of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one of the ways that he uh, uh, brought that uh, uh, about was through his beautiful character. Now, there's many, uh, there's this hadith that we mentioned. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ رَحْمَةً وَلَمْ أُبْعَثْ لَعَانًا He said, I was sent as a mercy and I was not sent as a person with uh, curses. And there's many things that Imam al-Ghazali mentions here, but some of the ones that I think are extremely important are the way that the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, dealt with people in times of difficulty. The way that he dealt with his enemy. There's a certain trend within uh, many Muslims today, which is that they take on the language of other ideologies and apply it to the belief in uh, justice and in fairness that we believe in as Muslims, but then they'll lose something else. They'll kind of take it wholesale and they'll miss out on something that we as Muslims believe. So for example, you'll find a lot of people talking about, oh, white privilege and white people this and white people that. Yes, historically, there's been a lot of issues, right? But even those people, we do not turn them into some sort of uh, group that are not people who can be guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do not turn them into... You know, we don't do what people, some people did and said, oh, they're devils, right? and believe that. No, no, no. They're creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are people who are in need of the, this risala, this heavenly message, just like anyone else is. Even if, even if at this point in time there might be people who are like, you know, death to all Muslims or whatever. There might be people who in this time they're saying that. But in a time not too far from now, they'll be in Mecca circling around the Kaaba and crying from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens upon their heart. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for many, many, many years, and who is this? It's the messenger of Allah. They're torturing his followers. They're throwing animal intestines on him as he's praying sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're uh, uh, abusing him, so on and so forth. They put his entire tribe, his entire clan of Banu Hashim under an embargo where no one can sell them anything. I mean, it's 
hard stuff. And to be really honest, we are not tasting 1% of what they went through. That's the reality. And what are they they're saying? Yeah, Ya Rasulullah, can we fight back? Can we get patience, patience, patience? And then at the Battle of Uhud, when the Prophet وسلم, had 70 of his Sahaba uh, martyred on the battlefield, and his own uncle, Sayyidina Hamza, Asadullah, the, 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 the Lion of God, Radiallahu anhu arda, Sayyid al Shuhada, the master of all the martyrs. He not only was killed on the battlefield, but he was, um, his body was mutilated and his, his organs were taken out and so on and so forth. And the Prophet وسلم, himself is wounded and blood is flowing from his blessed face. None of us have gone through that. None of us have gone through that. There are many great injustices in the world today, but none of us have gone through that. And then they say, O Messenger of Allah, make dua against them. O Messenger of Allah, make dua against them. And the Prophet ﷺ raises his hands and he says, Allahumma ihdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamu. Oh Allah, forgive my... He, did, he didn't say, Allahumma alayka bil kuffar, Allahumma dammirhum, Allah, oh Allah, destroy them, make their wives widows and their children orphans. All that nonsense that people say all the time. You'll find it in... Go around to Taraweeh and Witr. You'll find the weirdest du'as that have no connection back to the Prophet. He says, Allahumma ihdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamu. Oh Allah, guide my people because they don't know what they're actually doing. The people who today hate Islam, they hate what they think Islam is. And frankly, if that's the only information you or I had, we probably wouldn't like it very much either. But we got to do a better job of having the character of the Prophet. Look at what happened just, just recently in, in London when there was that, that tower that was on fire. And all these people were praying taraweeh and they were out late and they saw the fire and they started knocking on people's doors and getting people out of this burning building. You had people saying, thank God for Ramadan and for the Muslims being awake, otherwise more people would have been dead. That's just a, a simple example. I mean, that's something that gets headlines. But how many people say, thank God for my Muslim neighbor who took care of me when I needed it or who continuously sends me delicious cookies or whatever. You know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to like save a person's life in order for them to see the beauty of Islam. You just have to live it. And that's what, that's the beauty of the Prophet's character is that we as human beings, we now have the greatest of all creation in the form of a human being. Allah chose for him and willed for him to be a human being so that we can recognize the potential of what we can be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we have an example that we can follow in his footsteps, that we have the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam, who is our imam, that we can... Uh, uh, we can borrow from so that we can be elevated as human beings and we can have felicity and happiness in this life and in the next. That's one example. Another example, and this is also, this happened in Ramadan. I think it happened on the 20th of, the 20th or the 21st of Ramadan. Fatih Makkah. When did it happen? Farid, when did it happen? No, you know. When did Fatih Makkah happen? Anyone? I think it was the 20th. Huh? 20. There we go. It was in Ramadan. <laughs> so Fatih Mecca happened in Ramadan in the eighth year after Hijrah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam after 21 years, 21 years, 21 years of nonstop aggression, of some of his closest companions being killed, of he himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being harmed in the way of Allah of insults, of slander, of lies, of violence, 21 years. Someone says, someone, uh, you know, says a smart comment on Facebook, you write them off. You never want to be their friend again. 21 years of serious, serious problems. And the Prophet ﷺ now has the upper hand. 
and he comes into Mecca. And one of the Sahaba, one of the Ansar, because uh, he, yani he, he loved the Prophet said, you know, uh, the Prophet came to Medina and we're happy to have him in Medina. But look at how poorly you treated him for him to come out of Mecca into Medina. So he said to, to Abu Sufyan, he said to one of the, the Meccans, he said, Al-Yawm Yawm Al-Malhamah. Today is the day we got you. Today, today we're going to cut you up for what you did 21 years. And the reality is, is that's how human beings are. Human beings are, today's the day, been waiting for it, Let's see what I'm going to do to you. And then they came to the Prophet and they said, this isn't what you told us. And the Prophet he corrected that Sahabi, and then he said, Al-Yawm Yawm al marhama which is the same verb form, malhama, which means like to cut meat, and marhama, which is to give mercy. And then that same Sahabi, when he said, today's the day of, of slaughter, said, today's the day where Allah is going to humiliate Quraysh. Prophet said, today is the day of mercy, today is the day that Allah is going to honor Quraysh. People need Allah. Everyone, even the worst of people. White supremacist, whatever, swastika, they need Allah. They need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it, we, we can't withhold that from them. And that's part of the character of the Prophet is wanting good for people. Look at Malcolm X. Rahmatullah alayhi. Malcolm X, when he was in prison, I know we've only got a few minutes. Malcolm X, when he was in prison, they called him Satan. Like the other criminals felt offended by his presence. That's how bad he was. Look how Allah changed him around. Don't think about the wor world of means. Think about the controller of all the means, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The controller of all hearts. The one who can take people from the lowest of the low into the highest levels of nearness and blessing. Uh, we didn't even get to go through that many of the akhlaq. Uh, but I think that's enough. I think that's something in a time where people are so angry and in a time where people feel that we just have to call out everything wrong and that we can use uh, we can use certain language that because people have power in the majority and it's okay to use it against them but they can't use it against us that we have a model we have an example who we follow sallallahu alaihi wa sallam people might like it people might not like it people might say it's effective people say it's not effective i don't really care this is this is Safwatul Rahman Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is a quintessence chosen by the most merciful to guide people from the darkness into the light. And on Yom Al Qiyamah, when everyone is running to him, it'll be clear. I wish I listened more to him in the world. All that stuff, all my my ideologies faded, all my isms are gone, and all that remains is his intercession, Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. May Allah beautify us with his character. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with love of Allah and love of His Messenger and make the love of Allah and His Messenger more beloved to us than all other kinds of love. Ya Arham ar May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill our hearts with forbearance, with hilm, and fill our hearts with iman, and fill our hearts with concern for creation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of da'wah. May Allah make us people who invite to Him and who take on the banner and the responsibility and the inheritance of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and may we be gathered under his banner of praise on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and may all those people who have diseases in their heart uh, uh, may Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala purify their hearts and cure their diseases and fill the, the, the place where there was the fires of hatred fill it with the sweetness of Iman Ya Arham ar rahimin Wa Sallallahu Ta'ala Ala Sayyidina Muhammadin Wa Ala Ali Wa Sahbihi Ajma'een Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you for listening to this Seekers Hub podcast. To listen to the rest of our shows, please visit seekershub.fm. You can also subscribe to our weekly email newsletter called Compass, where we'll send the best of Seekers Hub's content straight to your inbox every single week. To get on the list, visit seekershub.org slash compass.